I want you to just picture this scene in Matthew chapter 14 for just a moment. Here are the disciples out at sea in a boat when a storm arises. The water goes from being very calm to life-threatening waves, and in the midst of all of the uncertainty, in the middle of all of the panic and anxiety, they see a figure walking out on water towards them. After initially being afraid, they realize that it's Jesus, and Peter, so eager, so willing, calls out to the Master, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus commanded for him to come, and such was Peter's enthusiasm and faith that he obeyed, and did the impossible. He walked on water and headed toward Jesus. But now, I want you to see how Peter's eyes betrayed him and opened up the gateway to doubt and limitations. The Bible says in Matthew 14 verse 30 to 32, But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me, and immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh you of little faith, why, did you doubt? The Bible says, when he saw, when he took his eyes off from Jesus and saw how strong the wind was and how large the waves were, he started to sink. When he took his eyes off from Jesus and focused on the danger, when he focused on what's possible and what's impossible, he began to sink. Now we can all learn a thing or two from Peter and his experience. There are times in life when you should ignore what you see, for the sake of what you believe. There are times in life when you should ignore what you see and have faith in the promises, in the Word of God. Some of us are sinking in this life because our eyes are focused on what can't be done, on what hasn't been done when instead we ought to be looking at what God can do and what God has said He will do. One great piece of advice I received was this, if you want to be distressed, then look within yourself. If you want to be defeated, then look back at your past. The devil will remind you of all of your failures, mistakes and shortcomings. If you want to be distracted, then look around you. If you want to be dismayed, then look ahead because no one knows what the future holds for them. But here is the essence of my message to you. If you want to be delivered, if you need to be delivered, then look up. Look up to Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Matthew 6, verse 22 says, The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is clear, spiritually perceptive, your whole body will be full of light, benefiting from God's precepts. What are your eyes focused on, dear friend? Because the thing is, if your eyes are focused anywhere else other than on Jesus Christ, then it's all negative. Everything will be bleak. But when we look at Jesus, we find peace, we find direction, we find strength and all that we need. But if there's one thing to come to terms with in life, it's the reality that life is unpredictable. But here's the thing, I am so grateful for the fact that in this ever-changing life, we have a never-changing God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. He doesn't change. He healed thousands of years ago on this earth, and He still heals today. He loved those considered to be unlovable, those considered to be outcasts and rejects. And He still loves those same people today. He spoke the words, peace be still, and the storm bowed down. And I believe He can and will speak those very same words in the middle of your storm, today. That's why when life happens, you can stand strong in the Lord. Don't allow life's challenges to shake your faith in God. Stand strong in the Lord. Stand and let Him fight your battles. He has promised that the deep waters won't drown us, and when we go through the fire, we will not be burnt. So whether you're in the lion's den today, or facing Pharaoh tomorrow, stand strong in your Deliverer who is Jesus, we can trust Him, we can rely on Him, we can depend, learn, and stand strong in the Lord. But I'm not saying it will be easy. I'm not saying it won't be tough, but with God, it's possible. He who started a good work in us will see it through to the end, reach out to Him by faith, be constant in prayer, be relentless in your faith, and watch Him move in seemingly impossible ways. There needs to be some persistence. You need some tenacity to stand strong in the Lord, to stand and believe, to stand and wait for what He has promised. Because when you stand, you're making sure that there is no temptation that can overtake you. You're making it known to the enemy that you trust God to have already provided a way of escape even if you can't see it. You're guaranteed victory when you stand strong in the Lord, and the thing about standing strong in God is that it does take practice. It takes a maturity of faith for you to be able to stand strong as a Christian. You go through one trial and God makes a way. 
You go through a tougher trial and your belief is stronger, but it's tested. Yet God still makes a way. It's a maturing of faith. And one of the keys to growth in terms of your faith in God is that it takes you actually cultivating a relationship with Jesus Christ. He invites you to know Him. He invites you to seek, knock and ask. But with that, your effort is required. You have to make the effort. You have to discipline yourself to read His Word, to pray daily. It takes daily communion with Him. You have to count your blessings and shift your perspective so that you're filled with thanksgiving for all that He has done. It's no secret. All of us. We face struggles. We face the struggles of decisions. We struggle with the decisions of doing right and wrong. We struggle with making good or bad choices. Sometimes of telling the truth or telling a lie. At times, even the decision to pray now or later or even tomorrow can be a struggle. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I even struggle with this flesh. In other words, I have the desire to do what's good yet I still seem to keep coming up short. When it comes to living righteously, and I'm being real, the struggle of sin is real. And I wonder if anyone else has ever reached a point whereby you're tired of struggling. So tired of falling, tired of struggling to do right, trying to live right and yet, nothing, seems to turn out right, simply tired of messing up. Well, the word I'd like to give you is that this struggle is for your good. It's for your good because if you think of your faith like it's a muscle, how do you build muscle strength? How do you build muscle endurance? Through resistance. Resistance means struggling. And likewise for us as Christians, to build our strength, to build our faith, we need to resist the devil. We need to go through some struggles. We need to fight against the tempting ways of this world. And believe me, it's a fight. It's a fight when your spirit man is saying no, but your flesh is saying yes. It's a fight when you want and need to be strong, but you feel so weak. It's a fight to press on when you feel like giving up. And I encourage you, don't you dare give up. Luke 10 17 says I have given you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. But things shall by any means hurt you. Now you may not be trampling over serpents and scorpions, but you can be trampling over weakness, trampling over temptations, trampling over sinful desires. Life is truly about choices. Where are your choices leading you? Will you accept that this is a struggle but choose to still believe God for a way out? Will you still choose to worship, to pray? Yes, today is in the past. And yes, we struggle with our decisions, but we have power over the enemy. We've been given power to defeat anything and everything that may tempt us to make the wrong choice and risk our relationship with God. And so understand me, it's okay to struggle with making the right decisions. But remember that although you may struggle, ultimately you have the power to understand. You overcome and be triumphant.